Turn with me in your Bible to tonight to 2 Peter. of education, 
uh, of, of, of building a, 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 a stable society, men think a free society, they want to go contrary to the word of God, amen, but uh, it, it's been there since the beginning of time where there has been rationalistic uh, pantheism, where there has been naturalism, where there has been uh, agnosticism, there has been philosophical ideas that have been given that, that come against the word of God, uh, there, there has been that of uh, theological liberalism that has tried to undermine and downplay the word of God. But God's word tonight is supreme and is accurate in its supremacy. Amen. The word of God is stable. What did uh, the Old Testament, what do we read Isaiah? He said, the grass withereth and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. Amen. We have a solid foundation in the Word of God. Amen. Uh, 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 the, 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 the written Word of God, amen, it can be trusted and not doubted. The Word of God. Amen. As we look at the Word of God, it's completely trustworthy in every area. Amen. From the beginning to the end. And so uh, Peter is sharing with us that he was an eyewitness of Jesus Christ. He was an eyewitness of the supremacy of God. He was an eyewitness of, of everything about Christ. And that is why he can say of certainty that the Word of God is true. Amen? So we're not talking about someone who just got down and started talking about some old fairy tale, some wise tale, some tradition that was passed down by man. Uh, all of you probably have family stories or you've heard of things in mythology or, or, or legends that have been passed down. And every generation they embellish them and make them a little bigger, a little better. Amen? But, 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 but the Word of God is not something that, that was just imagined, a fairy tale. It's not a legend. It's not something that was just passed out. But Peter says that the, in the Old Testament, it was the Holy Ghost who breathed on these men and they wrote the Word of God. And then we know that it lines up with everything in the New Testament. And then Peter begins to share that he and his colleagues that wrote them the majority of the New Testament, that they were eyewitnesses. Everything about Christ lined up with the Old Testament. And what we're sharing with you about Jesus Christ and His majesty, we were eyewitnesses of. How awesome tonight to know that He was an eyewitness witness of the majesty of Christ. He talked about the baptism of Jesus Christ, God the Father speaking, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased, the majesty and the glory of the Father. And so when he begins to, 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 to write here, amen, he, he comes over to chapter number 2 and he begins to share, I just want to read a little bit of this if you will allow me uh, this evening. But there are false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, Peter says, who proudly shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that he brought them, and bring up upon themselves swift, swift destructions. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with vain words make merchandise of you whose judgments now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the Old Testament world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing it in the flood upon the world of ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah unto ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly and deliver just lot vexed with filthy conversation of, of the wicked for the for that righteous man dwelleth among them and seeing and hearing
Spirit who vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the ungodly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust to, uh, unto the day of judgment to be punished. That's what stop there. We are living in a world, amen, that is so mixed up and preaches all kinds of damnable doctrines, amen. But the Word of God tells us that the righteous shall be delivered, that God preserves the righteous. But there is coming a day of punishment to those who make of the gospel, amen, heresies. Right. Amen. Paul shared, or, or sorry, Peter shared that, that, that uh, he was not just somehow cleverly devising a tale, but this is the truth. He was an eyewitness of it. And uh, he already approached something that we deal with today. Uh, in our society, there are a lot of preachers that like to preach and they'll preach anything for the means of money or for pleasure or for anything that brings them uh, a little bit of comfort in this life. But the Word of God is specific in allowing us to know that though they cleverly devise things, amen, sophisticated is what it means when he says cleverly devised, amen, seeking to devour the sheep, amen, but we know that they will come into the judgment of God. Peter said, we didn't devise anything, but we're telling the truth. Let's reference back to John chapter number one, the gospel of John. Verse number, I'm going to jump up. I can really start at verse number 47. Let me start at verse number 48. The Bible says, Nathaniel saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus, how do you know me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, or teacher, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending, upon the Son of Man. Now let's turn over. Someone read. I'm not going to read everything. Someone read now and let's bring in 1 John chapter number 1, verse 1 through 3. 1 John 1 through 3. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon in our hands and handle of the word of life. For the life was manifested, we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye may also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you understand where I'm going tonight? When the Word of God was given to us, and these men wrote the Word of God, they wrote it because they experienced it. They experienced Jesus Christ. They experienced the glory of the Father. And everything that they write unto us, amen, was written so that we may have that same fellowship with Jesus Christ. 
Amen. When we're in the Word of God in our life, and it becomes a part of our life every day, when it becomes a part of who we are, amen, and we live by it, and we walk by it, amen, it's not a fairy tale, it's not something to buy, amen, but it's something that's passed down from men, amen, that experience and witness Jesus Christ, and they share it with us that we may witness also. So tonight, simply what I want to share with you is that when we read the Word of God, and God's Word speaks to us, amen, we can bank on it. In a society that's twisted, amen, and they're saying wrong is right and right is wrong, amen, and it's so confused, and they're pushing their agenda, amen, and feeling as if we are the minority, amen. I want to encourage you that there is coming a day, amen, when Jesus Christ is going to reward the righteous, and those unrighteous will face the judgment of God because they did not stand upon the authority of God's Word. God's Word is true tonight. Amen. Everything that we build our life upon, the principles of God's Word, the standards of God's Word, the commandments of God's Word. Amen. It is true tonight. Sometimes the devil will tell you, well, it's just cleverly devised. It's just a tale. Amen. Uh, there are legendary stories of gods. Amen. Heroic figures. Amen. There are, are pagan mythology and its worldviews. Amen. But this is not that. This is God Almighty wanting to have relationship with His creation. Amen. Wanting to pry away. Amen. That we can have heaven as our eternal home. He loves us. So even when life doesn't make sense, Sometimes, folks, I'm going to be honest, sometimes the Word of God, amen, the enemy can, can come by and cause us to question. But we have to know that the authority of the Word of God was written by dead who we were under the influence of the Holy Ghost, but were also eyewitnesses of God. And they will share with us the awesome privilege of knowing God the way that they did. Peter talks and talks about God being known unto us. He's not imparting a new revelation. He's imparting what has been. We have a lot of folks that like to have the latest and the greatest and the newest. My wife was reading something to me that doesn't really care about like this. But some folks <clears throat> like having a new because it brings joy. And it does. But it's only temporary. It doesn't last. It's a temporary joy, and then it's fleeting, and then they want something else and do this and do that. Because it only brings joy for a short period of time. But when we experience Jesus Christ, amen. And who he is, it is a permanent joy. The world is chasing all types of, of, of religious things, all types of things that bring them answers and peace. But Peter says, we're making known unto you that which was. This Jesus we're making known to you, this isn't something new. This isn't something devised. This is something that we experience and we're sharing our experience of Jesus Christ with you in His life, in His death, in His resurrection, in His ascension, in His coming back for us. We want you to be able to experience that because the majority of it, we have already been an eyewitness of. So we're making it known unto you. Not a new revelation. Amen. We want you to know about the power of His coming. Amen. We want you to know that Jesus Christ, amen, when you hear about Him coming, amen, that you can be connected to Him so that you can be ready when He comes back for you. Amen. I'm looking forward to His first coming, aren't you? Hey, amen. When He comes back back his second coming. Amen. Because it's been made known unto me his first coming. 
Amen. And I'm excited about it because I know about a Savior who, who, who he came for me. He had God so loved the world that He sent His Son. I'm talking about a Savior who lived a spotless and a sinless life. I'm talking, talking about a Savior who was willing for not His will to be done, but the Father's will to be done. And He went to the cross of Calvary. And Calvary purchased my redemption. Amen. That He showed power over death. Amen. There were many, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but, but, but these, these early Christians, it is no and told to us that there were many passion plays that were lived out but the Christians weren't allowed to come to. It was about someone dying but being brought back to life. But when they were allowed to be part of these passion plays, they were compassionate about it because it reminded them of Jesus Christ who was truly the one who died. Amen. But He rose from the grave and He ever lives and He's coming back. And Peter says, I'm being an eyewitness of that. And that's what the Word of God is. It's a testament of the eyewitness of Jesus Christ that you and I can know Him through the manifestation of Him being brought to us. Amen. They're eyewitnesses. Amen. I love the Word of God. Amen. Amen. <coughs> eyewitness. An observe, observer. A spectator. He allows us to be an eyewitness through through his through those who eyewitness him. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It was an affirmation that the Son of God was the manifestation of God the Father. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And as those eyewitnesses saw Hey man, this isn't just a man who is saying that he is the Son of God and has no authority and has no backing up. But we were eyewitnesses as the heavens rolled back and God the Father spoke. And so as an eyewitness, we give you, amen, our, our testimony. If you were going to do a trial tonight, you're going to find out, is this or isn't this true? If I wasn't there at the scene of the accident, Sister God, would you call me to be an eyewitness? Probably not. But if Brother Craig was there and he was a bystander and he watched that accident, who are you going to be the one to call? You're going to talk to somebody who's just, I know all about it, Sister God. I think this is what I think he didn't run. I think he ran a stop sign. I think he didn't see it. I think he must have been texting. Brother Craig knew all the time that he ran the stop sign, but it was because not because he wasn't texting. It was due to some other issues. He was an eyewitness. Peter is giving us the confidence of knowing Jesus Christ because he was. John gave us the confidence of knowing Jesus Christ because he was not with us. James gave us the confidence of knowing Jesus Christ because he lived under the same roof as him. You may say, well, what about the Apostle Paul? On the road to Damascus, who art thou? But when he was not a witness of Jesus Christ, and the power of his resurrection. He was an eyewitness. I want to challenge you with this question tonight. As they were eyewitnesses, and we can take the confidence of their word of knowing that they were eyewitnesses, can we be eyewitnesses to the world? How evangelistic 
our way. Well, how do you know? How, how do you know? Because we know the scripture and we can back up what we believe through the word of God. Because these men were eyewitnesses. But I've been an eyewitness because I've experienced the power of salvation. The same ones that was in temptation, Peter said these same ones, he will deliver from temptation. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Hey Amen. How do I know who God is? Because I'm an eyewitness to His delivering power. He's delivered me from temptation. He's delivered me from sickness. He's delivered me from things in my life. I'm an eyewitness. I believe it's time that we as believers start living like we're eyewitnesses to the things of Jesus Christ. Instead of living so just whimsical, sometimes we live like the Word of God is just a fable or something that's devised. Oh, we just do it because that's what the church said. My, my church believes this. No, what does the Word of God say? What, does, what has God spoken to you? How has He quickened your life and your heart to make you an eyewitness so that you can share Jesus Christ with others? Be an eyewitness. It's interesting. I'm going to close with this. But it's interesting that God still has a prophetic way of working. Do you believe God still works prophetically these days? I do. But it doesn't line up to man's logic. It lines up to the authority of God's word. It lines up to the light and the spirit. And everything about the Old Testament prophetically happened because these men, they experienced the Holy Ghost. They became five witnesses through the Spirit. You and I live in a, in, a, in a day where the Spirit of God, amen, is flowing in such a way that each one of us can be eyewitnesses. God can speak to our hearts about we can know it because the Spirit of God has witnessed to us. I don't know, that's just where I'm at tonight. Being an eyewitness to the things of God. The work of God in its empowerment is because men and women alike, they were eyewitnesses and the Word of God is given to us. And now I'm challenged Anyone tonight, you have a thought?